Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm here to talk about Supernatural, episode 1206, titled Celebrating the Life of Ace of Fox, which premiered Thursday, November 17, 2016 on the CW. Um, so guys, sorry for the delay. Um, normally I would record this the same night I watched the episode for the first time, but I've kind of been swapped. But you are still getting my first general re reaction of the episode. It's the only thing I owned in this video. Otherwise, any TV-related images shown on the screen are found from Google. I'm making this just for pure fun of it, so no money's being made off of this. So with all that said and done, guys, let's get right into the video with their 10-minute clock. So what is something new that we learned in this episode? So pretty much we get to learn about this hunter, Asa Fox. And we pretty much get to see the moment he was introduced to the supernatural world. And then we see this huge montage of his life as a hunter to the point of his death. So initially we are introduced to a young Asa through a flashback to the 1980s where he is saved from a werewolf attack by Mary Winchester, who is supposed to be retired. So then over the years, we do see Asa writing postcards to Mary, though he never sends them as he gathers more intel for hunting and goes on hunts himself and stuff like that. Uh, until his um, last moments um, when he's hung up a tree. Um, we also get the return of Jody Mills, um, and on her day off, she gets a surprise visit from Sam and Dean, who were just finishing off a hunt nearby. They have some marathon bonding together, but that's all cut short when she gets the news of Asa Fox's death. And Asa, for Jody, has been kind of a casual fling between them after he came to town on a ghoul hunt and she helped him out with that. Um, so the name Asa Fox though is familiar to Sam and Dean because they heard stories about him through Alan at the Roadhouse. So I thought that was a pretty interesting little um, nod back to the earlier seasons. So we pretty much have the whole episode taking place at Asa's wake where a bunch of hunters are gathering. This is where Sam and Dean realize that other hunters talk about them. They spread stories where they pretty much create them to be these legends type things. We also have Mary showing up um, because she remembered Asa as the little kid she had rescued. And pretty much he would have been the only one still alive that she knew um, from her, I guess you could say, time. Um, but because of that, Dean's kind of a bit of angry over the fact that she would come to some guy's funeral that she saved one time and yet be distant to her own sons because of that though sam is trying to be peacemaker between his mom and his brother um but anyways we find out that the demon lj has a vendetta against asa and he and this demon ends up targeting the hunters at the wake eventually he gets exercised back to hell from a group a group effort from the hunters but two hunters are killed by the demon. The situation is kind of kind of very similar, and it kind of parallels to the whole con worm um, case back in episode 616, which had also many hunters as well, and it also had hunters um, being suspicious of one another as they try to figure out who was the infected. In this case, it's who was the possessed. So another interesting thing about that is the fact that Mary's father was in episode 616 in that whole situation, and a few of other Mary's um, relatives as well. So that was an interesting parallel in that. Um, we also get an appearance from Billy the Reaper. Um, her last moments in the episode were making an offer to Mary to come back to where she belongs in heaven. Um, for a brief moment, there's a pause, but Mary ultimately refuses, and she agrees to go out to breakfast with her sons before they part ways again. So what was the most shocking moment of the episode? I think for me it has to be the fact that Billy wanted Mary's soul. It was kind of, she kind of teed it up as since she helped Dean out, he kind of owed her one now. And she kind of went directly into the fact that she wanted Mary's soul, making it sound like Dean's payment to her for, help, for her helping him was for him to give up his mom's soul to be returned to, um, to where it's supposed to be. So I thought that was pretty shocking. I would have thought that Jody and Mary meeting would have been a shocking moment, but the fact that it was, um, it was in the sneak peek that kind of gave it away. So it was that whole scene where Billy's like, well, I've come to collect Mary because she's not meant to belong um, in the land of the living, to say the least. So moving on, though, to top three favorite moments. I think my ultimate favorite moment for the episode has to be the whole part about Jody 
Mills, Sam, and Dean watching movies together, marathoning together, just having pizza and wine and just hanging out. It's a brief moment we got to see with them, but it just it's a snippet that I definitely appreciate. I wish we got to see more of it, but just the idea of that that is what they do together when they're just hanging out and bonding and having all this um, time together is just it's a great um, um, lets imagination going, I guess I should say. I really love that for sure. And it was just it was also very clear what the dynamics were between them. You also got her Jody's welcoming behavior towards the boys and then how they were wanting to um, spend time with her. And then also when she got the news about Asa Fox, how they were being supportive of her without it seem like they were overstepping. They knew that she was strong and they made it so like it seems like they weren't there just to support her. They made it seem like they weren't there to help her, but she was helping them if she let them tag along in a sense. It was just a great way to to see how they navigate around each other and how they just come to know each other so well in the last five, seven seasons now. So that was just great to see as well. Another favorite of mine has to be at the wake where you get all these hunters getting so starstruck when they meet the Winchester brothers. When Dean introduces himself, all the hunters within hearing range kind of freeze. They turn around and they have like this gobsmacked look on their face. And then when they ask if Sam's around, this one guy, Elvis, he darts right out there in hopes to find Sam. And then he finds him and he gets all, he goes all fanboy on him. It was just, it and then to have Sam and Dean talk about the fact that, did you know that these guys tell stories about us? So it was just, it was really interesting because on the one hand, you have the Supernatural book series fan within the show, which who are fans of the characters that they don't know are real. And then you have the fans within the Hunters that do know that these guys are real and they've done all these pretty crazy stuff. Uh, so it's just it was really interesting to get that type of reaction because, like Sam said, they never go near any hunters unless they happen to run into each other on a hunt. So it's just it was great to see that interaction as well. And the last favorite moment for me has to be when Jody meets Mary. It, again, it was in the sneak peek where Jody's just gobsmacked over the fact that Mary is alive and that she's actually meeting the mother of these two very important men in her life that she's pretty much kind of adopted into her uh, her family now. So it's just very interesting to see that. And then at the very end, um, where they're by the, the funeral pyre and just Jody tells Mary that she doesn't want to get in the middle of whatever is happening within the Winchester family. But she tells Mary that Sam and Dean are like the best men that she's ever met. And I love that Jody did that. I love that she just, even though she didn't want to get in the middle of it, she wanted to tell Mary that despite whatever she might have the problem with her sons being, her sons are the best men she's ever met. And she's never she's ever got to know and it's just it was a really touching moment and I'm glad that Mary for Mary's response she says the problem's not with them it's with me I think that acknowledged the fact that she knows that her boys have turned out to be these these great guys and yet the fact that she's not with them it mostly settles with her I think I hope that made sense. I'm sorry. But let's move on to the top three peed moments. I didn't really have any except for the fact that there was no goodbye between Jody and Sam and Dean. Initially, when Sam and Dean come and join Mary and Jody, Jody kind of takes a step back to give the Winchester family some much needed time together before they parted ways. And then that's the last you see of Jody. She just walks off after the funeral um, pyre has flamed its course. And that's it. And then we see Sam and Dean walking off the scene with Mary. So it was just, it was a bummer that we didn't get an actual goodbye um, between Jody and the brothers. So that was my only peeve for the episode. But what will I remember most when I look back on this episode? The fact that we got to see Jody Mills meeting Mary Winchester and the fact we got to see both of these women interacting with the brothers in two very different ways even though they're essentially supposedly having the 
maternal role, I guess you could say. Uh, moving on, though, to random questions. First one was, was Asa Fox meant to be as well-known as the Winchesters? From That's kind of the impression I got from the the wake, from all the, the stories the Hunters were talking about. So I'm just wondering if that was the case. And if it was, why did the Winchesters never work with Asa Fox before? I would have loved it if they had, I had worked a case together before. Um, next question. How long until we see Mary again? Would we be going a few episodes, which would equate to a certain amount of weeks, or will we see her in the next episode? Um, so there's that. Last question, and there's the timer, so I'll do make it very short. Uh, will Sam finally get his anti-possession tattoo again? What about Jody and Mary? So we know f- from Sam's torture-induced hallucination he had with Lady Tony Bevel that he doesn't have the, the the flaming pentagram anti-possession tattoo on his chest, which he had, which got burned off in season nine um, by Crowley. So when is Sam going to get that redone? And also, does Mary know about that? Does she have one or something similar to it on her on her persons? And did Jody ever get one? Because we know that Kevin had gotten one. We know that Mrs. Tran had gotten one before it got burned off. So I'm wondering if um, these two ladies have gotten it. Also, that begs the question if Claire or Alex have gotten them themselves. So there's that. But let's move on to predictions very quickly. Based off the promo for 12.07, huge reminder though, guys, um, it's not returning until Thursday, December 1st. So that is a one-week hiatus break due to the American Thanksgiving. So there's that. But the promo shows that Sam and Dean joined Castiel and Crowley as Lucifer returns as Vince Vicente. And it looks like Sam and Dean are going to Vince's rock concert to kind of scope things out. Based off the synopsis, though, for 1207, it reads that uh, Lucifer realizes that as a rock star, Vince Vicente, he can get his fans to do whatever he wants. Thrilled with this power, Lucifer arranges to play a secret VIP concert in order to kill all of them. Sam, Dean, and Castiel enter the underbelly of the music industry to try to stop him. So I'm very interested to see just how far into the music industry Sam and Dean will be able to get into before um, confronting Lucifer. Wonder if they actually will confront, be able to confront Lucifer as Vince Vincente. And I'm just curious to see what have Castiel and Crowley been doing since they've um, teamed up to go after um, um, the, the Archangel. But that's pretty much it. So what did you guys think of the episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it as well as your own thoughts and theories. What you think is going to happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I reblog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, all that good stuff. And I'm pretty routine about it. So if you want to keep up to the update, whoa. Sorry, if you want to keep up to date to that, go follow me there. Also, my WordPress cl- account is connected to that um, Tumblr page as well, so go follow me on that. And if you want a, uh, a jotted down play-by-play of the episode, check out my live journal entry account. The link for that is down below. All the links I mentioned earlier are down below. Um, that link will give you, like I said, a play-by-play of what happened in the episode as well as my in-moment thoughts theories or questions that popped up during my first time watching the episode Um, you also get a few quotes in there as well so go check out that link if you want and that's about it so thank you guys for tuning in i hope you come back in two weeks to hear what i have to say about the next episode but until then this is mel wish you a great day great week wherever you are bye for now